Hello and welcome to this new video on chaos engineering. This is one of those interesting topics that if you are having some issues with your production cluster, your customers are having like bad experience, this is the video that you want to see to implement chaos engineering. So chaos engineering will bring reliability and availability to your clusters and also makes your workflow something that will know like it will happen always for you. Let's dive into it and talk about like what is chaos engineering, uh, what are the tooling that there are out there in the industry and also what are the resources that you can follow to implement your own practice. What is chaos engineering? Uh, we can say about year 2010, 2009, many companies started adopting cloud, uh, cloud platforms or in some way or another distributed systems. When you're having like microservices in distributed systems, you know that there are a lot of things that can, they can happen. Because at the end of the day, these systems are connected with some kind of like a software plus usually some kind of like hardware together. So not only uh, you should take care of your software or your application on top of that one, but also you need to take care of this like platform that you're running your application on top. Uh, one of the pioneers in this industry is Netflix. Netflix was one of those ones that they implemented chaos engineering by bringing down no, uh, like instances randomly. And the first application that they developed, they called it Chaos Monkey. It's like releasing a monkey in a data center and monkey goes in there and just chooses the server that it wants and like kills it. That's where the need comes from. It was at the beginning for com big companies like Netflix, but currently we are seeing even the startups need some kind of practice like chaos engineering to make sure that they can give good experience to their customers. If you want to talk about chaos engineering step by step, firstly, we should define what we call the normal behavior of our application or our microservice or API server. So for example, we are going to say that this API server should have the latency of maybe five milliseconds or maybe it should use this amount of CPU, this amount of RAM, not more than this, or this amount of maybe hard disk. Or it, can, it should write to the hard disk maybe five times per second, not more than that. If it's more than that, it's some, something like, red, like a red flag in your system. Or it should access this uh, defined amount of like data or this defined like files. If it goes higher than this, there is like a security breach or something in that nature. At the beginning, we should kind of define what we call as a normal behavior. Secondly, we should introduce some variables that they are going to mimic the real world problems. For example, something like crashes, network slowness or network failures probably. So we should introduce variables that mimics these kind of real world ev events for our application. And then we are going to see how our application behaves, learn from it, create the tasks for it and make our application better for the production environment. At the end of the day, this is like one of those practices that makes sure that you are running very fine in your production and your user has very good experience. Uh, there are some advanced topics inside it and those advanced topics can be like real world events. Like you can, you can have one real world event that is, for example, network failure. Add on top of that network failure, something like instance crashes. Add on top of that instance crash, probably like TV crash or anything in that nature. So you can mix and match these different real world events to make sure that you are capturing kind of like good mix of what will happen if you are really in production with your customers. Other uh, thing that people are doing, they are like uh, running it, this experimentation in production. It's not really suggested if you haven't implemented previous like steps and you are not sure of your application, but if you have implemented it, for sure go and implement it in production. Just make sure that you are going to kind of li limit the uh, blast radius. By blast radius, I mean that if your system goes down, what are the number of the customers that are going to be impacted? You should limit that one. And what is the time that is going that your customers are going to be impacted? Can you bring back the systems in like probably two minutes or something in that nature? If so, go and implement it. If not, go back, implement something that you can limit the blast radius of it, and then start implementing these kind of like features. The next one is going to automate uh, kind of like running these systems continuously, maybe once per day, two times per day, three times per day, or maybe with each application like promotion to the uh, production you want to run it. As much as you're good in your practices of, for example, uh, limiting the blast radius and also having good like bringing back bringing the system back up very soon then you are going to automate it as much as you want 
And then there is another thing that it's good to add to this workflow. And that is after you have automated it, you need to create some kind of feedback loop to your developers or dev managers so that these systems or these like feedbacks are going to get into the code in the next release. One of the things that if you have noticed in here, you need to have is good monitoring practice. So you need good monitoring practice to capture the metrics. You need the, to capture the logs and you need to trace the logs. So basically you are going to capture the metrics to know when the things has happened in the wrong way. And then you are going to use logs and traces to trace them back to the issues that like caused it or how they can fix it. If you want to say in a nutshell, this chaos engineering is like a vaccine. We are injecting something harmful to our like production system to build immunity in some real world events. I know that, for example, in the Netflix, they are even killing one region of AWS to make sure that they are working fine. If you want to talk about the chaos engineering evolution, we can say that everything is started by Netflix, uh, 2010, 2009, with Chaos Monkey. They're a very simple system that it was going inside like uh, kind of infrastructure and killing the instances one by one randomly. And then kind of like Netflix released that code and said that yeah, everyone can have it then it was like new companies coming in and saying that let's have failure as a service. So failure as a service or fast is something like Gremlin, like some companies like Gremlin, that they give you this ability that Netflix gives you as a service and then you just pay for it. Basically, instead of implementing it yourself, you can pay for it. Still, there are a lot of open source projects out there that you can go in and implement it yourself if, if you don't have that budget. Chaos engineering in the Netflix, they started with just one that was Chaos Monkey that was going in and killing the instances. Then they introduced Latency Monkey that is like uh, making a slowness in the network connection. And then uh, probably like you can say Chaos Gorilla, that's something that I like, goes in and kills the whole like availability zone. And you can have Janitor Monkey, the funny one actually, that goes in and sees if there is like any extra resources that is unused and kills it or probably like deletes it. For, for example, you can say a PVC is not connected to the pod, it goes and deletes that PVC or storage. About the tools, uh, we are going to have tools, uh, introduce tools from different levels. Uh, the first one is going to be the fast, that is Gremlin, and then we are going to uh, introduce the tools that you can implement it yourself. So talking about the Gremlin, that's uh, one of the leaders in the industry. So it's like complete chaos engineering platform. It has a lot of enterprise customers. So if you have a big company, go just with it. And uh, you can kind of track this reliability improvement task, kind of like it goes in, breaks the systems, you create the task and you can uh, kind of track if the task has been implemented in the, inside the system. It supports many infrastructure platform, AWS, Azure, anything you name it, they have it. Integrates with different monitoring tools too, and also integrates with your CI CD. If you wanna like do some kind of like fast or failure testing at the end of the deployment in production, sure you can do it. The next one is something that you can implement yourself in your cluster, that is Litmus. Uh, you can have the chaos as a declarative way. That's something that we like because we usually uh, if you have been working in this industry, probably you have GitOps practice implemented. So having it in a declarative way will help you a lot and it's in line with other uh, kind of your infrastructure. Uh, it has a lot of experiments already packaged in. Plus it has something like chaos hub that is like other people have, you can like create new experiments and then kind of like put it in there in this chaos hub and you can download and implement it in your system. You can have your own logic, chaos logic. For example, you are implementing some property software that is like probably with the language that is yours or your company's. You can still use this one and create your own chaos logic with it. Most of the common languages are supported in here. Go, Python, all of them are supported. And also there are some resources like a short video that you can adopt Litmus in minutes. So instead of uh, having that like steep curve that other applications they have to learn, here we don't have it. You can just see that video and implement Litmus yourself. The next solution is ProofDoc. ProofDoc is also one of those uh, leaders in the industry. They are completely open source, but they are tightly tied with the 
Azure platform. So if you are working with Azure, for sure go, go with this solution because they can connect and run attacks with Azure. They already are integrated with the Azure monitoring. So, and also they are integrated with Azure DevOps pipelines. So kind of like you can go in and work with it seamlessly with the Azure. And the next one, uh, which is Chaos Cube, the simplest one to implement, to install on your Kubernetes cluster, and it just does, and it just does one job, and that is killing your instances or pods. So some pretty job randomly doing it, and you can just install it pretty easy to get your hands on it with this like chaos engineering thing. And about the resources, we have this uh, community broadcast that is a podcast that is happening. Uh, you can go in and kind of like subscribe to it. And the next one is this document by ProofDoc that's like part of this ProofDoc's repo. And it's talking about different resources on chaos engineering, like practices, principles, tools, papers, books, videos, anything that is out there and talking about the chaos engineering, you can find it in here. And yes, that's pretty much it. I suggest you start the change in your company and tell me about how happened there. Thank you very much and have a great day.